So this, the idea of this was try to create like something welcoming for new students, but also to kind of mix, you know, the urban Brussels city and bring a bit of nature to the campus. Way ho, my name is Rosie and I live in Brussels. I'm making this podcast for VUB. For a long time, I've been wondering, why can't all genders be treated equally? Why is mental health such a hot topic today? And what can art do to specific people and communities? These and thousands of other questions have been wading through my mind. Through education and research for their project, The World Needs You, VUB, Vrije Universiteit Brussel, makes the world a better place. And that's why I get the chance to talk to engaged youngsters, professors and scientists that know just a little bit more about the topic than I do. This is Rebels with a Cause. In this episode, I talk with former VUB students Sylvia and Anouk. These two creative ladies started the project The City is Our Playground. Together with local communities, Sylvia and Anouk paint murals and other objects in the public sphere of Brussels. Participants are engaged creatively and socially, which is the ultimate goal of their project, creating sustainable long-term connections in the neighborhood. It all started actually at VUB, where they both studied. Sylvia and Anouk thought the campus needed more color, so they decided to paint it. Let's listen to what they told me about their projects. So when I moved to Brussels, I've been here for nearly four years now. Where are you I, from? Uh, Colombia. Okay. Originally, and when I was 14, I moved to the UK. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, so I arrived four years ago and um, I've also lived in different places in Europe. And every time I, I try to put on events to meet people because it's quite hard to move yes. to a new city, especially if you're, yeah, if you finish studying or you're kind of like a bit older, um, <laughs> my old age. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but um, no, so I, I put on these drawing events like they're just okay. they're called draw jams, and it you, also, you always were passionate about drawing. Uh, yeah, so I, I studied design uh, yeah. about ten years ago in, in okay. London, actually. So this is my is my career. Yeah, I did a master's in linguistics, but this is more of out of interest. I started putting these events to just just invite people to you know think of it as a living room where you mm-hmm. just come and you also to try and open drawing as a as something that is very accessible for everybody mm-hmm. because often like these events tend to be very either very expensive or you go there and then you feel very self-conscious about mm-hmm. drawing i mean when I, me going and, myself yeah. going to you know thinking that i can draw like i would go yeah. to these events and then look ne- you know next to me and, and then somebody's Picasso doing something and, very yeah. beautiful huh? and you see picasso next to you yeah and, yeah exactly yeah. and you're like oh. <laughs> Next year. <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyway, I put on this event and then Nanook actually came to the first one that I did in Brussels. Okay. Uh, but it happens that you were doing the same thing yeah. with your friends, like not publicly, but yeah. you know, just inviting friends around to draw. Get the creative juices flowing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was trying to reinvent myself, yeah, but yeah, I yeah. couldn't do it alone. So I was always yeah. inviting my friends. You know, like we met and then Nanook at the end of the event, she was like, oh, I really like what you're doing. I'm also doing something similar. Like, can we, you know, can I help you out on the next one? And can we do something together? I was like, yeah, sure. And that's why I'm doing this yeah. event to meet people like you. And then we were like, okay, let's go for a coffee. <laughs> and then according to you, I didn't text you for ages. <laughs> 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 she she ghosted you. I I, I, I played it cool. Exactly. <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, she's oh, she's too creative. Like she has so many artists. She's friends, out of probably. <laughs> I'm not one of them. <laughs> uh, no, but eventually I did text yeah, you, yeah. Uh, and then we went for like, uh, yeah, one of those coffees that never end. You know, it's like okay. I don't know, three four hours that we were talking. And we're like, okay, this is shared we're doing. Interest, shared interest. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. There's there's too much to explore. Yeah. Let's let's find a way. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the the opportunity to do something. Um, I mean, I, I had done murals in the past, um, but never in the way that we kind of were doing it together. So we're like, let's, you know what? Why don't we? Propose to the VUB since we both have a connection yeah. uh, to mm-hmm. do something on on campus, mm-hmm. uh, and also like I mean it's very great. I, I think everybody that comes here agrees that you mm-hmm. it, need, it needed a bit of color, so we're like, mm-hmm. let's try and propose something, and that was the one at Building T. Using art to bring young people together, it reminds me of the Monument of Comfort at the campus of VUB. A monument created as a safe place for silence to think about loss and grief. 
The UB shows itself in that way as a compassionate university. So we know now how Sylvia and Anouk met, but what is their art project exactly about? The project, the name of the, the organization is called the Cities of Playgrounds, mm -hmm. and it's an organization that wants to um, create connections uh, between people in the city uh, through art. Um, so we do a lot of interventions in public spaces. Um, uh, by, for instance, we paint electricity boxes with a youth um, organization or, or homeless people. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the idea is to, so wherever we're working, we always try to concentrate on the vulnerable communities around okay. the physical space. And we, let's say we target them or we make it, we think of how to make it accessible for those communities. But everything that we do is always free for everyone and it's always open for everyone. Okay. So it's not like, you know, you won't be allowed to come and participate. It's just, we always try to think, uh, First of all, like who has a connection with the with the space, whether they work there or live there, who's the person that you know walks by the public mm -hmm. the wall that we're painting or the floor that we're painting uh, every day, and it's very important for us to facilitate that that mm -hmm. connection or that uh, yeah you know making your mark in your own yeah. city to feel I guess to to integrate uh, a bit more to feel to feel more proud of where you live. And how do you contact them then? How do you is it through an organization or do you or do you discover a place and and you're like this could use this could be nice to to, to do a project here let's reach out to the community mm. it's both actually um so it's always like yeah i mean wherever we're working um yeah we we try to first of all look at who are the organizations that already have the connections with the people that we want to reach it's really one thing that we've learned is like it takes such a long time to really know a mm -hmm. place and to really know a community and to create a connection i mean ourselves to make a connection with the place where we're working so we try and spend a lot of time there but still mm -hmm. it's very difficult to come in we always come in as outsiders mm -hmm. let's say so we put a lot of weight into into finding who are the organizations that uh, yeah. that are present and then through them rich okay. people but yeah. there's a lot of door-to-door -door yeah well. I think the offline part it's really important in the, the work that we do yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah because otherwise yeah you can do a, a call out and there would still be a certain group that will reach uh, or like find you so mm -hmm. for us it's really important that uh, we go out we, we knock on every door like there was a project and there was like one street full of shop owners and we really went into every shop and like talking to them uh, introducing us, saying wh which project we're going to do, also listening to them, like, would they actually want this in their neighborhood or not? Because that's mm -hmm. also important, mm -hmm. you know. Um, of course, we want, we want, always want to hear yes, but mm. sometimes it's a no, so it's important to know why. Uh, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I think dialogue and the offline part is really important. Yeah. And they also get a say in what is being drawn. Yeah. How yeah. how does that happen? Do you have creative brainstorms or? So I would say, in general, the project, there is a pre-engagement um, where we do the workshops. So mm -hmm. before we have, like, we contact people, we have the dialogues. And then we have the part where we do the workshops and we invite people to come. And this is open. It's also often spontaneous so that they don't feel like there is a boundary or something. Mm -hmm. um, then they can just come, they can draw, they can write, they can like express the way they want. Um, and then out of these workshops, we create a design that we'll finally like implement on the space, uh, put in the space yeah. and paint. So if your neighborhood in Brussels could use some color, you know who to contact. VUB deeply cares about connecting their research and education with the reality of Brussels. And that's a reality of a lot of different languages and cultures trying to coexist. VUB wants and needs to collaborate with the city and everyone who lives there. They even have a campus called U-Square right in the middle of the busy student neighborhoods where they bring people, city and knowledge together. I had a chat with Dimokritos Kavadias, or as he likes to call himself, Dimu. Dimu is a professor at VUB and knows everything about the youth in Brussels and how to create durable connections between them. Dimu and I talked about how the youth is shaped by their environment and about how they shape it themselves. 
But before diving into this, can we actually consider one consistent group of youngsters in Brussels? Or is that an illusion? Well, it's not, not an illusion as such, but the first thing uh, to, to uh, get clear uh, is that there is not one youth in Brussels, that there are different different young people in Brussels. Uh, and that's the second thing. Uh, the, the Brussels is a very young city, uh, demographically speaking. Uh, 25% of its population is from zero to 25 years old. So it's it's a, it's a big, uh, sizable part of, of the population. and. Also, it's a quite diverse population in the sense that, well, we have 183 nationalities represented in Brussels, a plurality of cultural groups. And if we look at the young people uh, in Brussels from uh, the age of zero to 17, uh, we see that uh, one out of 10 has Belgian parents, is from Belgian descent with Belgian grandparents, meaning that nine out of 10 uh, I, uh, are, are uh, either from neighboring countries, uh, Europe 21, uh, Eastern Europe, um, Northern Africa, Morocco, Tunisia, uh, uh, Turkey, the rest of the world. Uh, so so it's, it's really a city consisting of minorities uh, and especially among the young people which means that uh, also religion has changed, uh, religious affiliation has changed. So almost one in two uh, is, is, is now Muslim in Brussels. And, and, and by that, I don't mean, I don't mean to, to, to say that it's, that it's a danger, no, because if you, if, you looked, if you did research uh, 30 years ago, 70% uh, of our young people were Christians. But all those are how many youngsters are Muslim? Um, we, we did now we, we did a survey uh, among 16, 17 year, 17 year olds, and 48 percent was Muslim, or, or identified as a Muslim, um, which is an approximation. Um, but but meaning that what I wanted to say is well, uh, in 97 we did a survey and we found that 70 percent identified as a Christian, but in those Christians uh, you had you had only my very small minority. Uh, that went to church every week uh, and others were, were really like like having a quest in, in the meaning of life you might say uh, others were protestant and so it, there is uh, there is there was a large diversity among those uh, those those young people and it's the same among uh, um, the the youngsters today in brussels uh, even among the muslims uh, uh, you have you have different different types of muslims and um it's not one homogeneous group, but but if you want to to understand them, you have to you have to be be aware of the fact that it's a very diverse group. So what I remember, there is no such thing as one consistent group of youngsters. In fact, there's a whole lot of diversity in Brussels. I wondered how Sylvia and Anouk manage that diversity. How does someone cope with that many needs, voices and ideas? Maybe a bit like in the environments uh, that we create because we end up, uh, as I said, like spending quite a long time in the places where we paint. So, you know, hours sometimes, like at the one of the projects that we did last year with VUB, we slept overnight. Uh, there okay. was an occupation of uh, Saint Papier. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you know, but they were there for like six months. So we, we stayed with them over and it was for just six months. No, no, just the night. The okay, okay. They were there. They were occupying the space yeah. for six months. With the hunger strike last year. Ah, yes. Yeah. So they were on campus, and uh, you know, like they were there, like downstairs when we were painting upstairs. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were like, it was very important to engage, mm -hmm. like everybody that was in the physical space. Not, I mean, at the beginning, it started very much with. Uh, this connection, like all our work in the VUB has been between, you know, to get students, professors, staff, like people that the environment of the yeah. of, uh, also local neighbors. Yes, um, yes, to connect everyone. Actually. Yeah. Um, but, and then like we realized that there was an occupation there that wasn't really part of the VUB world, but mm -hmm. it was so physically connected. So, uh, yeah, we really wanted to uh, to just to find out uh, what was going on. So mm -hmm. anyway, we stayed uh, and we realized like actually this, this work is so much bigger than mm -hmm. uh, I mean, just because we're a university doesn't mean that, mm -hmm. you know, you think of university, you think, OK, students, professors, but, mm -hmm. but there are so many other things going yeah. around the university. And we were like by spending Peeled so much onion. time. Yeah. 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 And yeah. then, you know, we were there like one in the if you're there in the evenings, like 
the type of people that you, you have the teenagers coming to put in the yeah. loud music. They don't even study at the VUB, but yeah. they know that there's nobody there so they can come and use the space. At the weekends, you have the kids uh, that are using the, the green space because yeah. there isn't much around. And uh, in one of the projects, they, you know, some of the kids had never met a student before, mm -hmm. but they, they have been coming to the university for the last mm -hmm. six years to play. Yeah. And this is very bizarre, yeah. you know, yeah. to find. So all these little things that we're like, okay, there is there are so many things. By spending time uh, in a place, you find out so much. VUB is clearly where it all started. Dimo values initiatives like this a lot. He thinks that in order to create a durable city, you need to let different groups of people interact and connect with each other. Just like in U-Square, the central VUB hub that we mentioned just before. But there is more. There are a lot of initiatives, um, and and that's one of the things that does that is uh, quite um, that, that that is interesting in Brussels. It's, it's a young city, it's a dynamic city. You get a lot of of uh, young people from outside of Brussels um, that try things out. You can try things out in Brussels, um, in in uh, in the Canal Zone. You find lots of initiatives, and you find find out that's one of the things that was also when 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 you contacted me and and you showed me uh, the the mural paintings and 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 how how you try to engage communities. It's heartwarming uh, in the sense that, well, um, when you're in an office and, and you work in a corporate sector in Brussels uh, or on the European institutions, you might you might you might think how trivial is that uh, putting people together to work on a mural, but but uh, it's really important to let people from flesh and blo blood see each other and try to understand each other and create on to create uh, to have a common goal. I think that that having a common goal and and, and seeing the result of, of your activities is, is important. I really think that those common initiatives, like those murals, but also other initiatives where, where you have uh, young people uh, that meet each other, um, they, that those are quite important because they tend to see the world through the, each other's eyes. And that's what we need uh, in this context as Brussels. Uh, we need public spaces in which you get all those different types of young people together. Uh, um, that's that, that should be one of our aims uh, if we want to make it work. Mm -hmm. To to make a durable cities work. Yeah, yeah. To to make it to make it sustainable in social terms. Yeah. Uh, to 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 uh, to keep them or to 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 let them dream together. Uh, to to uh, have a common goal. Um, even in even if if future look, looks gloomy um, with with the climate uh, change, I think it's quite important that we can dream together, and and dreaming and having 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 a common hope opens possibilities, and I think that's that's quite important. Yeah. Yeah, and have fun together yeah well, even in okay. of course of course that's that's what yeah a common goal is super important to make a city durable that's why i'm so fond of the city is our playground they clearly have this common goal of creating but what is more important for sylvia and anouk the aesthetics of the mural or the obtained relationship with the community yeah, I think so. The aesthetical part is the least priority of the project. I mean, in the end, it's always nice that it looks nice, but that's not the priority. It's important how the people react with the project and how the process is. Yeah, I would say like uh, similar, but it is, I think it's changed also <laughs> over time. Uh, for me, at the beginning, it was very much about we're the making look. something beautiful mm -hmm. for the city. Uh, like certainly when we started, oh, even like when I was doing murals before was very, uh, it started from an aesthetic need, but then when you start seeing actually the connection and the, you know, the kid that is like painting and the, you know, she's, she's very happy to, to, to have painted something that even though she did it completely wrong, but the next day she's coming back. Well, wrong to our eyes, but yeah. you know, <laughs> out of design, out of. Uh, but then the next day she's coming back because she's like, I can see this from my window, and I saw you guys mm -hmm. again, and I really asked my mom to come and bring me here. You know, mm -hmm. they were like, well, let's change the design for you, and uh, even mm -hmm. though there's nothing else for you to paint, let's do another red dot because mm -hmm. that's your favorite color, and then we <laughs> add it to the design. You know, so it's it's really about that. Uh, so that's why we also keep it very flexible. I mean, now the yeah. with the aesthetically and the design is is always very flexible. It's not, if you try and do like a very realistic thing, there's no room for that. One of the best things about such initiatives is that it connects people that normally wouldn't come together. And all together, they combine their strengths to work on a common goal. The UB clearly gave a starting point for the project of Nanook and Sylvia. 
That being said, I wondered why, despite many efforts, there are still schools that barely have any diversity. Dimo's research is focusing on this educational segregation. But what is educational segregation, though? Well, that's a tendency of our educational system in Belgium, and I'm speaking of the French-speaking uh, system and, the, and the, the Flemish-speaking system. If we take uh, formal education, French-speaking and, 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 uh, and Flemish-speaking, we see that at the age of uh, go the, the transition from primary education to secondary education, the age of 11, 12, uh, we tend to put them in tracks. Uh, uh, we have some tracks that are more academic, uh, the, the, the general tracks, and we have, more, uh, we have tracks that are more technical or vocational in nature. And, and we see at the age of 14 that the, there is already a very strong segregation uh, uh, with uh, pupils that, that are already in the academic track uh, uh, and pupils that are in the, the vocational track. Moreover, we see that there is an overlap between the background of the pupil, the socioeconomic background of the pupil, and the track in which she ends up, yeah. uh, meaning that if your parents are highly educated and have some some uh, some uh, resources, well, the the likelihood is quite high that you will end up in a school with a strong academic track. Um, and if your parents are unemployed and or uh, are from from a lower socioeconomic status group or an ethnic minority group you tend to, to end up in vocational track or in special education, which makes that they also don't see each other because they uh, follow courses in different schools, um, have different playing grounds. Uh, they don't make friends uh, across the borders. Uh, there are strong walls, institutional walls, but also real walls. And moreover, they tend to live in different um, geographical parts of the city. So that's the link with spatial segregation. Yeah as well absolutely so we see that the the younger population uh, from from migrant background lives in the canal zone uh, uh, in french they speak from the croissant pauvre uh, it, it it resembles a, a, a croissant uh, you know uh, the pastry and that's one of the one that's one of the things that that make that those pupils and that those youngsters and uh, those young people don't tend to um know each other they and they don't tend to meet each other in, and to interact with each other. And it makes them strangers for each other, yeah. Spatial segregation, educational segregation and socio-economic segregation are all intertwined. This makes it very important for different communities to connect and maybe inspire each other in their decisions. I think schools are an excellent place for this because they have the power to bring change. I wondered what Dimo would say. The problem is that schools uh, are the first institutions to which we look if there are social problems. Because that's one of the only places that are left where you get all those people together from different backgrounds. So one of the things uh, we should strive for is to have schools that are mixed. I think that's quite important. Uh, meaning that you should try to mix schools and not segregate schools. And that's something... <laughs> Well, yeah, for everyone, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Indeed, that's quite important. That's that's one thing on the higher level. Uh, for the, the schools themselves, I think the teachers that get into school, uh, in those schools, should have at least a notion of uh, the city. So nowadays, um, all the, the teacher trainings uh, have urban education modules. Uh, we At the VB and uh, at Erasmus University College, we started with a, a module on urban education. Uh, we started it in, in Brussels, I think, six, seven years ago. And nowadays you find it in all cities. Uh, urban education is a, is a hot topic for teacher training. Uh, a last thing is that we saw that um, there are certain attitudes uh, among the youngsters uh, which could be triggered, uh, which can be stimulated at school. And one of the key attitudes that we identified in our research is compassion. And it's an attitude, and it's an attitude that is, is universal. It's not tied to one religion, mm -hmm. and it's it's uh, the competency uh, to to um, see the pain in uh, another human being, and also to want to do something about it. And what we saw was that um, compassion is independent of social background. Uh, girls, women are more compassionate than men, but more importantly, is what we saw uh, was that. Um, there is uh, a sizable part of the variation uh, uh, in compassion that is attached to the school, meaning there are systematic differences between schools in uh, how compassionate 
their, their, their pupils are, independent of the characteristic of the pupil. And what type of schools are less and more compassionate? Uh, we, that we don't know yet. <laughs> but there are, there are certain schools that, uh, that stimulate compassion. And, and compassion is quite crucial because it, we see that there is a correlation uh, with pro-social attitudes and there is a negative correlation with intolerance and homonegativity, for example. So it's something that mediates um, uh, how uh, youngsters look at their fellow human being. And schools can stimulate that. And, and that's, that's, uh, that's something that we want to explore further on. After our conversation, Sylvia, Nanouk and I had a stroll on campus to have a look at what they made. So this, the idea of this was try to create uh, like something welcoming for new students, but also to kind of mix, you know, the urban Brussels city with and bring, bring a bit of nature uh, to the campus and to keep this. So we kind of divided it into two uh, okay. graphics. So this is representing the city and the transition into the campus. Just, yeah, the idea is to represent people, but also to, again, like to keep the design quite simple. This was like, it was a nice project because Probably most people that have been involved in our previous BV projects came okay. because it was also during exam time. Also, it's a moment for people to to meet and to yeah, yeah. to enjoy the campus. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, this was beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> this was Rebels with a Cause, a podcast from VUB. You can find all episodes on YouTube or on your favorite podcast channel. This podcast is a part of the framework The World Needs You. All information can be found on vub.be slash podcasts. Go check it out. My name is Rosanne Koutsir and this podcast is a co-production by VUB and Chase.